Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Glory to God, glory to God. Amen, amen. We ask the Lord to have his way. God is good. He's faithful, amen. He's faithful to us. And we are grateful today for his goodness and his mercy following us all the days of our lives. Amen. God bless you tonight. Uh, good to see you. Hope you are doing well. Praise the Lord. Uh, as you come on, go ahead and like and share the broadcast so that uh, we can know that you're here. Also, um, uh, so that other people can join in with us. Amen. God is good. God is good. We pray that uh, everything is going well. Praise God. It's a beautiful hot day. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we're getting on through this summer pretty quickly. Um, praise the Lord. And so we thank God for that transpiring. Amen. That we are in the land of the living. Amen. And able to see another summer. Praise God. So as you come in, uh, let's go ahead and like and share, Lord. You can give me some hearts, amen. You can give me some comments tonight, amen. God is good. We pray that um, that we will continue to participate and uh, interact in the Bible study, amen. We're studying the word of God, amen. And God uh, enables us to do this. And we're so grateful um, to be able to uh, listen uh, and study and read and uh, understand, amen, what the Lord is saying. Praise God. And so uh, as you come in, amen, let's go ahead and get uh, prepared to get started here. Uh, God is good. God is good. Amen. I'm going to pray. And then we're going to go ahead and get into the lesson. Please, please like Please share. Please let other people know that we are on tonight. We are on. <laughs> Amen. Tonight. And God is good. Praise the Lord. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you tonight. Lord, we bless you. We praise you, Father. We honor you. We thank you, oh God, for who you are, Lord. We pray that you will bless us in our hearts and in our minds, Lord, tonight. Forgive us for sin, God. Anything that's not like you, Lord, we pray that you remove it now, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Open up our hearts of understanding, Father. Father, uh, enlighten us tonight, hallelujah, God, that we will uh, appreciate your word, Lord, and we will uh, discover something else in your word that you are speaking to us in this very day, in this very time. Lord, we thank you, oh God, that you have been with us even all day long. We pray that you will keep us, God, even as we go through this uh, lesson. Father, I thank you, Lord, that there will be no distractions or disturbances, Father, that you will help us, God, help everything to flow according to your will and according to your word. God, we cast down anything, hallelujah, Lord God, that comes to or seeks to destroy, but we pray, God, hallelujah, your blessings upon each and every one who will hear the word and also those who need to hear. God, I pray that they will find this uh, uh, this Bible study, that they will find it in their hands uh, and, and, and be able to hear. Father, we thank you, oh God, that we're not just hearers of the word, but we are doing also. And so we thank you tonight for what you're going to speak through me. And I thank you, oh God, in Jesus name we pray. Amen. So tonight, I want to simply go over a verse, amen, uh, in the scripture, praise the Praise the Lord. It's not very complex. Amen. We've heard it before. Praise God. But sometimes we have to uh, remind ourselves, amen, of what the Lord has uh, given us in the word of God to do uh, in under circum uh, certain circumstances. Praise God. And so uh, I want to make sure that we are hearing and listening and able to be attentive unto the word of the Lord. And so we're coming from 1 Peter 5 and 8. And in that scripture, uh, praise the Lord, it says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, uh, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Amen. And so uh, we want to make sure that we understand uh, what this verse is talking about tonight. Amen. And that's, again, simply all that we're going to do. We're going to do a study of this particular 
particular scripture. And I pray I get through all of it, uh, but I uh, uh, perceive that we may have to do a part two on this. Um, but nevertheless, um, be sober. Now in Amplify, it says be sober, well-balanced and self disciplined be alert and cautious at all times that that enemy of yours the devil prowls around like a roaring lion fiercely hungry seeking someone to devour amen and so we want to look at this uh verse here and get an understanding. So, so Peter, Peter is the author uh, of this particular verse, and we uh, we know about Peter. We're grateful for his conversion, praise God, uh, because we know him to be a fighter. Amen. He'll take your ear off. Praise the Lord. And so we want to thank God that he was uh, 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 given the, the responsibility to write what he wrote uh, as part of the Bible. Amen. And so he's telling us here, be sober, be vigilant. Amen. And he tells us that there is an enemy. Amen. There's something Thing, someone uh, walking around here looking for us, amen, us as Christians, praise the Lord. And so uh, he gives us these two commands in at the beginning of the verse. He says, look, be sober, be vigilant, amen. And so he's warning the believer of this mortal enemy that we have, amen, the devil, Satan himself, the father of lies, amen, the deceiver, the accuser, of the brethren. Amen. And so uh, 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 in this Christian life, we know that uh, that is like uh, it's like warfare. Amen. We're really facing warfare. But some of us at times don't remember and or we forget or we're not sure or we don't really believe that there is a war. Amen. And so Peter tells us who our enemy is. It's the devil. <laughs> Amen. And so we have to look at what he's telling us, uh, because, again, uh, just like we have ancestors, uh, we have people in the Bible who have gone before us and can give us the proper advice and or recommendations. Amen. As to how to battle. Praise the Lord. So he says, be sober. Amen. Be sober. And when we think about that word sober, oftentimes we use this word in conjunction with drunkenness. Amen. Drunkenness. And so sober literally signifies to abstain from wine. Amen. That's what sober uh, pertains to for the most part. Amen. It signifies uh, abstaining from wine. And so, uh, uh, or in that biblical day, uh, it was speaking of that in particular. Now you might say, oh, I don't drink wine. I drink beer. Oh, I don't drink beer. I drink I don't know, liquor, or it, it's got to be brown, or it's got to be, you know, I only drink, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. Listen, it, it's telling us to be sober. Praise the Lord. Now, we all know when someone is drunk, amen, uh, for the most part, they it's very, um, what I want to say, distinctive, amen, when you're drunk. Amen. Uh, it's very distinctive. It's very uh, easy to look at and know. Amen. As a result of the behavior that embodies that condition or that state. Amen. And so for the most part, uh, uh, someone who's drunk is not in control of their faculties. Praise the Lord. And so they tend to flounder around aimlessly and carefree. Amen. And believe it or not, that's why some people drink because they feel like, oh, I'm free. Oh, I don't have to worry about this or, uh, you know, how they say you drown your sorrows. Amen. Uh, but but the truth of the matter is uh, that spiritually we are to be sober. Amen. Uh, we're cautioned against being drunk. Uh, 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 now, I know for me, uh, when I was younger or out there or whatever, I guess it doesn't matter what time frame you decide to drink, but um, 
you know, uh, they, I would go with people who would go to the club and drink and whatever. I was always scared to drink. Amen. Uh, mainly because I had family members who I had seen the adverse effects of that. Um, and I did not want that for myself, but also I knew that I didn't want to put myself in a peculiar situation and I didn't want to be out there like that. Amen. I saw uh, some of these females and what would happen and things like that, especially when you go to college and, you know, you're out there on your own. You're like, Ooh, I ain't getting drunk, <laughs> you know, or whatever. So that's how I felt about it. Amen. So you would not have found me drunk. Praise the Lord. Now I might've been, uh, you know, I'm sure I was out there doing something, but it wasn't that. Amen. And so we thank God that, uh, you know, that it cautions us in the scripture to, to abstain uh, from this excess of wine. Amen. Uh, we, we have to make sure that we're not uh, in a state where we can be easily uh, taken, taken advantage of. Amen. Now, in 1 Peter 4 and 7, it's, it's, we're also warned by Peter to be sober. Amen. But in this particular scripture, he's talking about having a clear mind or a clear head to be clear, clear. Amen. In your mental, mental faculties. Amen. And so it's imperative that we as Christians be sober. Amen. And so, uh, you know, we can't, um, hmm, do what I want to say, we, we, well, literally we should not be drunk. Amen. Literally, we should not be drunk. Let's look at Ephesians 5 and 18. Amen. Ephesians 5 and 18. It says, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with what? The spirit. Amen. And, and isn't it ironic that we call wine and drinking, whatever, that we say that those are spirits? Isn't that something? Amen. Uh, but but we're supposed to be filled with the spirit, with the capital S, which in the Bible means Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we're supposed to be filled with the power uh, of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, not filled up with other spirits, uh, including wine. Amen. And so uh, another version says, listen, uh, don't be filled with, uh, don't be drunk with wine, wherein it is reckless indiscretion. Amen. Reckless indiscretion. So that indiscretion, amen, is what we need to be cautious of. So we, we just, we, we, we just should not be drunk. <laughs> period. Amen. But we also don't want to take that on because it causes us to become susceptible to dangers, including developing a life of drunkenness. Amen. Uh, addiction, drunkenness, um, things that lead us down a path where it has control of us. Amen. Uh, and, and it's very hard to get off of that path. Praise the Lord. So we are to be sober in the sense of alert or aware. Amen. We are supposed to be sober in the sense of being alert and or aware. Amen. And so when we're alert and we're aware, uh, the Bible says the New Testament uh, uses that word sober metaphorically. Amen. Uh, which is spiritual alertness or watchfulness. Amen. And, and so we can also find that in First Thessalonians uh, 5 and 6, uh, 8. We have 2 Timothy 4 and 5, 1 Peter 1 and 13 and 4 and 7. So a drunken person has neither a clear mind nor any control over their motor activities. Amen. And so you may say, well, why is she talking about drunkenness? I don't have that problem. Amen. But do you have any problem? Amen. Do you have anything, amen, that takes you off course? Anything that keeps you from paying attention? Amen. So uh, really drunkenness in this scripture is really the extreme 
The extreme thing that takes you off your rocker would be drunkenness because at that point you are out of control. Amen. But there are other things that distract us to the same ability or, or the same capacity to limit us to be able to be vigilant or sober. So it could be as easy or as simple as watching too much TV. You're not paying attention to everything else. You're watching TV. I'll never forget my dad. I, I would, I would, when I was really young, I would be uh, in front of the TV and I would literally be like this in front of the TV, looking at TV. And he, he would be calling my name. I have not heard him. And, and pretty soon after he says it, probably, I don't know how many times he started to get a little upset, like, girl, now nah, I didn't call your name, you know, however many times I'm like, oh, I didn't even hear you. I've been here watching TV. I ain't thinking about you, you know, or whatever. I was distracted. My face was glued to the TV. Amen. I did not was not aware of anything around me, including my own father. Oh, thank you. Holy. You know what, Holy Ghost? That's pretty good. I could not even hear my own father calling me. Hallelujah. Do you did you get that? Oh my goodness. Now I didn't plan that at all. Amen. Uh, but I did not hear my father calling me. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. And so we have to be vigilant. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We have to be sober. Hallelujah. We have to be aware, watchful. Amen. We need to be able to hear. Amen. What the spirit is saying to us. Amen. We need to be able to hear our heavenly father talking and speaking and trying to interact with us. But we have so many things distracting us. It could be as simple as being on social media. Amen. Well, you don't think that this uh, and all this swiping and texting, uh, you, if you would go in, I want you to go in there one day. And Facebook has this thing where it will tell you how much time you have spent on Facebook or Insta or whatever you're on. Amen. It'll tell you how long. Amen. And you will be astonished that you have spent that much time of your life or any given day on social media. Amen. Oh, meanwhile, we have an adversary walking around seeking who he can devour. Amen. We're it, 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 okay. Maybe you're not drunk. Maybe it's not TV. Maybe it's not social media. Maybe you're a workaholic. Maybe you're at work all the time. Maybe you are too busy uh, dealing with the kids, taking care of the kids, uh, washing dishes. I don't know what it is. Amen. But don't uh, 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 limit what the word of God is saying here. It says, don't do these things in excess. Amen. To the point where you're no longer paying attention. Come on here. Amen. Uh, some of some of this, uh, some of these things come strictly to distract us. Praise God. And, and it's distracting us from being watchful because we are so engrossed in it from day to day that we're missing what's happening spiritually. Amen. And so how does this pertain to Christians? Amen. When uh, so I want I want to ask a question. When are we most likely to lose control? Amen. When are we most likely to be bent out of shape spiritually? Amen. It's usually in our mind. Praise God. Uh, sober people, listen, if you're sober, sober, you have balance uh, in, in disposition. You have balance in your thought and your actions. Amen. Uh, they are, you're not flighty. Amen. You're not carried away by your own notion or, or the notions of other people. Praise the Lord. And so we have to be mentally self-controlled. Uh, so that we can be ready for the situations that we will face in life. Praise God. And so we're talking about, uh, if you're joining me, amen, we're talking about be sober, be vigilant, amen. And so a lot of times we don't realize or even believe that Satan is at work. Do you believe that? Amen. I want to know if there's anybody that believes that uh, that that Satan himself is at work. 
praise God, meaning he's on his job, amen, he, meaning he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, but are we on our job? Amen. Are we doing what we should be doing? Amen. Uh, what we should be doing, Peter is letting us know we have a job to do, and that is to be sober and to be vigilant. Amen. And so a lot of times, if we don't believe that there is this enemy that's on the prowl, uh, then we will not take the proper precautions. Amen. And in spiritual warfare, uh, listen, the devil never takes lead. Uh, he he doesn't go on a leave of absence. We do the, do it all the time. Amen. But the enemy does not. Amen. Or if he does, listen, if he does, listen, in, in the Bible, uh, when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, praise the Lord, uh, I, I'm reminded that uh, it said something to, to the effect of uh, 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 the devil went away, but then he uh, waited for an opportune time. Come on here. Amen. Uh, he's sitting around watching and waiting. So why are we not watching for him? Praise the Lord. Amen. So we are to be sober, vigilant, or in other words, watchful. Amen. Peter, the apostle, had exhorted us to uh, make sure that we were watchful. Amen. In first Peter four, I'm sorry, first Peter one and 13. This is still first Peter, right? Uh, amen. In first Peter one and 13, it says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be sober minded. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, so in other words, he tells us in first Peter one, to prepare our minds for action. Amen. Uh, in other words, we have to be sober. Sober also means conditioning your mind to get ready for the fight. <laughs> Amen. Condition your mind. Amen. To get ready. Be sober minded. Amen. Uh, but for some reason, uh, Peter repeated this three times in first Peter. Three times in First Peter, he tells us to be sober, amen, to be watchful, amen, to uh, have a clear mind, praise the Lord. And so he saw fit to repeat this, to reward us that sobriety and watchfulness are exceedingly necessary, amen. It's useful for the Christian life, amen. He wants us to understand that the one uh, cannot be well without the other. Amen. Unless a man is sober in body and mind, he will not be able to be watchful. Amen. A man, a human, a person, amen, will not be able to be watchful. Uh, it, it, listen, you won't be able to be watchful over yourself or against or over the uh, snares of the devil. Amen. Uh, or temptations of sin. Amen. Or things that are coming your way. Amen. That are coming to harm you or to take you off course. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we have to be on our guard and on our watch. Amen. Otherwise, we could easily be liable to any kind of sin or temptation. Uh, so we are to lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets us uh, what, but we can't do that when we are uh, when when we are uh not being watchful to what can easily provoke us or entrap us amen so when it says be sober or be vigilant um there's a syriac version that translates these words as watch and be ye mindful or remember, amen, watch with diligence, care, and industry, keeping a good lookout, minding and observing everything that presents, and remembering the power and the cunning of the enemy, amen, that's what the Syriac version says. Praise the Lord. And so I, 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 it drew my attention to that word industry, amen, because that's almost synonymous with work, right? And so uh, we've got to work at being vigilant, 
We've got to, listen, this is a task that believers must take on. Praise the Lord. We have to diligently be on the lookout for things that are trying to creep in to destroy us. Amen. Uh, This is a job. Listen, you can't get off your post. You can't get off your job. Amen. You can't uh, be somewhere else. Amen. A wall. Praise Lord. (laughs) Amen. Because the enemy is very cunning. Now let's look at what it means to be cunning. Let me find this here. Amen. Cunning. Cunning means having or showing skill in achieving one's ends by deceit or evasion. It means being crafty, tricky, sharp-witted, manipulative. I mean, deceptive. I can I can go on forever. Listen, it means being inventive. Praise the Lord. Did you not know that the enemy is somewhere uh, putting something together just for you? <laughs> he is. He's so out there somewhere doing something. Amen. Just for you. Praise the Lord. So why do we underestimate the power of the enemy? Amen. But I'm reminded in Luke 10 and 19, it says, behold, I have given you power. I have given you authority to do what? To tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. Don't you tell me the enemy has no power. Yes, he does. But you serve a God that has all power. Amen. Uh, And he gave us power. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. I, I had to add that part. And he gave us power. Amen. To to fight against the power of the enemy, which means that we supersede him already or else we wouldn't be equipped to fight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So how do we work? Amen. We have to stay vigilant. (laughs) How do we work? We have to stay sober. Amen. You uh, listen. uh, Sometimes staying sober is a fight. Ask somebody drunk. Ask somebody that uh, has an alcohol addiction, amen, or has any kind of addiction, amen. It's fight. It's a fight. It's it's work. Praise the Lord. Listen, let's not under uh, undermine this, amen. It takes something, amen. And listen, uh, you have to remain sharp in this day. Uh, being sober helps us to stay stable enough. Listen, I, I, that's why I don't fool with none of it. Because I don't, listen, it's enough work to stay stable when I am sober. (laughs) Listen, I can't be drunk and do it. I can't be uh, strung out and do it. I can't be uh, looking at everything on the TV and everything, listening to any kind of music, doing all kinds of stuff, and still try to fight this enemy. Come on here. Now, you might be able to do it. Praise the Lord if you can. But uh, this whole Bible, this whole chapter right here, 1 Peter is saying, listen, be sober, be vigilant, be watchful. Uh, Listen, there's something out here trying to get you. (laughs) Amen. Hallelujah. Even if it's nothing but your flesh, your flesh is, is, is a fight all by itself. Amen. Uh, what, what does the Bible say? Um, uh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Amen. All of those. Listen, you already fighting those things. <laughs> then you add in the enemy and you've got a fight on your hands and you need all your faculties. You need all everything to be intact. <laughs> Hallelujah. In order to fight this war. Hallelujah of faith. Amen. And so uh, we stay vigilant and we stay sober, uh, which so that we can be sharp. Amen. So that we can retain the ability to apply truth to any situation. Listen, if I'm not sober, my mind is not engaged and I'm not able to look at a lie and proclaim the truth. Amen. I'm not able to uh, see the uh, the lies of the enemy through uh, my uh, 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 drunkenness, so to speak. Amen. And so we have to be sober so we can combat against that. Amen. We can't have balance or poise if we uh, take truth into our minds without using it. That's the work that's required. Amen. It's required to take on these 
thoughts and these actions and these things that are coming against us and work at refuting them by knowing the truth. Amen. And so the Bible says, listen, 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into cap captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's a lot of work. <laughs> Amen. Like I always teach, uh, you have to think about what you're thinking. Amen. You have to think about what's happening so that you can combat against it. Amen. Uh, so again, sober speaks to the condition of our mind. Amen. What, what is our mind doing? What is our mind thinking? Are we thinking on those things? Amen. That are true and lovely and honor and honorable and, and of good rapport and excellent and praiseworthy. I know I'm not putting that in the right order, but praise the Lord. But thinking on good things. Amen. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. So, so Peter uh, continues to list uh, instructions to Christians as he prepares to uh, conclude his chapter. Amen. And so that's how we get to first Peter five. He already warned us a couple times. First Peter one, first Peter four. Now we're first Peter five, where he's like, listen, be sober, be vigilant because you have what? An, av uh, an adversary, uh, the devil, <laughs> amen an adversary listen we have to believe in a real devil we have a spiritual enemy with an agenda lord have mercy we see we don't believe sometimes we don't believe it we don't believe sometimes that there's something out there against us that there's something to bring harm to us but do we not remember the scripture that says listen the devil is has come to what steal kill and destroy amen that's why christ came that we might have life amen and that more abundantly listen he came to counteract <laughs> the forces of evil in our lives. Amen. And so, um, and so we have to respond with being sober and vigilant. In other words, uh, if I was at war, amen, and I had a war mate, which I don't know if that's what you call that, but if I had someone in combat with me, amen, do you want them to be on their post and on their game or, or, or how much more trouble would it be amen if they're if they're drunk now they weighing you down because they can't take up that they can't hold up their end of bargain amen uh, so in other words it's almost like the lord is saying listen i'm out here fighting for you too but you got to help me fight praise the lord you've got to be sober you got to be vigilant have you ever tried to carry a, a drunk person lord have mercy I don't know where this is coming from tonight. Amen. Have you ever tried to, to carry somebody that, it, it, look, they don't even have to be drunk. Maybe they're passed out. Dude, that is dead weight. And we don't want to be dead weight to, to the Lord who's fighting for us. Amen. He said he would, uh, that vengeance is his and that he is our strong tower and that he is our battle ax and all of these things. But you just dead weight to him because you're not fighting. You're not helping. You're drunk. You're not paying attention. We're not being watchful. And, 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 and it's just dead weight. Amen. That's like being with someone who, uh, say you're married to someone who doesn't hold up their, uh, uh, end of the bargain. Amen. They, they don't help around the house. They don't work. They don't whatever. It, it's, it's a burden. Hallelujah. Yes, you can fight through it, but it would be nice to have some help. Amen. Uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. What, what does it say? Two is better than, uh, than one. <laughs> The notion of helping each other, amen, the notion of there being someone else there. Listen, let's partner with the Holy Spirit, amen, let's partner with him, amen, and let's fight together, amen. He needs us to be sober and vigilant, on guard, looking for us, waiting for us, uh, amen, to, to jump into this thing, and let's fight the good fight, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, the good fight of faith.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He he was in the garden of Gethsemane and he, he said, I think it was Gethsemane. And he said, listen, can you watch with me for one hour? Can you help me pray? Can you help me to fight the enemy? Can you? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We 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 we're, we're falling down on our responsibilities. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can can I call you and ask you to pray for me? <laughs> are you ready? Can you pray or are you wrapped up in something? Something. <laughs> you don't have no business being wrapped up in Amen. We not holding up our end. We're dead weight right now. Hallelujah. But he came that we might have what? Life. So we speak life. Hallelujah to our mental capacities today. Amen. We speak life. Hallelujah. That we will get things in balance and in control. Amen. Hallelujah. That we will be sober. Hallelujah. Watchful. Amen. Vigilant. Hallelujah. Think it not strange because this enemy is cruel. This enemy, Satan, listen, he's looking around to see who he can devour. The only way it's overcome is if we're first of all watchful, amen, and second of all ready for war. <laughs> we got to put on this whole armor of God, amen, uh, the, that we will be able to fight against the wiles of the devil. Amen. Uh, listen, I'm in first Peter tonight. First Peter five and eight, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil as a roaring lion uh, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Hallelujah. So, so, so let me get back to my text. Amen. Peter writes that there is danger beyond what we can see naturally. Amen. There's danger beyond what we can see naturally. There is a deep concerted effort and agenda. Amen. Far beyond that of a powerful man. Amen. That that could inflict harm. Listen, the devil, uh, it, it, whether it be man or woman, uh, uh, listen, uh, that he's trying to harm. He is the real enemy. It's not your it's not your neighbor. Amen. It's not your spouse. It's not your friend. It's not your co-worker. It's not your enemy. Amen. Necessarily, it is the devil that we are fighting. Amen. In other words, like it says in Ephesians 6 and 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and uh, powers and rulers of darkness and, and, and uh, wickedness in high places. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, our enemy uh, desires to devour us. Who praise God. He wants to cause real lasting harm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, in my study, I discovered that this word, th there's a Greek word for this, amen? Amen, and it's spelled K-A-T-A-P-I-E-I-N. I'm not going to try to say it, amen? K-A-T-A-P-I-E-I-N, amen? And so it literally means to swallow or to drown, amen, to drink. Uh, to drink down or to swallow down, to devour, amen, or even to overwhelm, praise God. Um, and so uh, we know that the enemy seeks to damage our faith, praise God. Now, there is a big storm that is brewing. If, if I lose connection, that would be the reason why, amen, but I'm going to persevere. Uh, but if if we get disconnected, that is the reason why. Praise the Lord. And so the devil seeks to damage our faith. He he wants uh, he wants fear to shake us up. Amen. He wants uh, he wants lies to distort understanding. He wants to pull wool over the eyes of the people who need to assist you. Amen. He wants to uh, thwart the vision uh, for your life. Amen. He wants to um, derail your destiny. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. So so since he can't 
touch us like actually and thank you lord for the fence that you put all around us amen but be because he can't do that he seeks ways to cause us to become weak and ineffective as christians amen Hallelujah. So how does he do this? By overwhelming us. Remember that word? Uh, hallelujah. By trying to drown us. Amen. Uh, trying to swallow us up. Amen. And so the Bible gives us warning and it, and, and it doesn't say to live in fear, right? We're not to live in fear, but we also can't live uh, outside of the reality that there's an enemy. Amen. And we're we're not instructed to to ignore the devil, but we also can't cower over in the corner and act like he's not there. Amen. Joshua one and seven tells us to do what? Be strong and courageous, strong and very courageous. Amen. We've got to stand up against this thing. Amen. We've got to stand up against the power of the enemy. Praise the Lord. And so tonight, I'm going to stop there, amen, and I'm going to take prayer requests if you have any, amen, I'm going to continue this lesson, praise the Lord, when there's not a thunderstorm, uh, amen, and when, uh, and when we can pick back up with the rest of this lesson, praise God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, and so uh, let me pray, amen, uh, and we will pick back up next week, amen, praise the Lord, dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you tonight. I thank you for this warning. I thank you, Lord, for this admonishment, Father. Hallelujah. Even this reminder, oh God, that we are to be sober and vigilant, Father, for we know that there is a real enemy, hallelujah, that's seeking whom he may devour. Oh God, but I thank you right now, oh Father, that you are our, uh, our shield and our buckler. Hallelujah. You are our very present help. Oh God, you are the one who is protecting us. Thank you for being a fence all around us, Lord. Even in Job, when the enemy was coming to accuse, Father, you would not let him touch us. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. But yet we want to partner with you tonight. We want to join in forces with you, oh, Lord. Hallelujah, that we can be sober and vigilant and contribute, hallelujah, to fighting the good fight of faith, oh, God. We thank you, oh, God, that you have suited us in your armor, Father, let us have on that helmet of salvation, that breastplate of righteousness, the, uh, our loins girt about with truth, our, uh, our, 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 our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, our shield of faith. Hallelujah. And the word, the sword, which is the word of God. We thank you, Father, for, for arming us. Hallelujah. As we go forth day by day. Hallelujah. To, to, to stand in this last and evil day. Equip us. Hallelujah, Lord. And help us to be on guard in our mind. Help us to be on guard in our spirit. Help us to be watchful and discerning. Uh, hallelujah. Help us to seek you diligently. Oh, God, that we will be able Hallelujah, Lord, to fight this war of faith, oh God. We thank you tonight, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the uh, opportunity to pray. Hallelujah. We thank you for the opportunity to be watchful. Hallelujah. We thank you for the opportunity, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord, to see the, the, uh, the obstacles coming. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. And to stand against them. Hallelujah. And when we've done all to stand, hallelujah, help us to stand there for, oh God, waiting on you to come and rescue us, God. Hallelujah. And to take uh, care of all of our cares, oh God. We thank you, Lord, tonight, God. Hallelujah. How you blessed us how all throughout this life, God. Hallelujah. It, even in this godless society, Father, to be sober-minded, to be serious about you, Lord, to remain spiritually alert, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, that you will continue, Lord, to protect us from all the wiles of the enemy, all this... Uh, from this roaring lion, hallelujah, that seeks to de devour us, Lord, but help us to see the, 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 the schemes, the plots, the plan, the tricks, the cunningness, hallelujah, uh, the subtle uh, ways that he seeps in, Father. Help us, oh God, to guard against it, Father, oh God. And we thank you tonight, Lord, for, for how you are helping us and warning us and protecting us, oh God.
Hallelujah. I want to pray for those who are sick, who are shut in, who are in nursing homes, Father, who are recuperating from surgeries, about to have surgeries, Father, those who are fighting all types of diseases, cancers, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. I pray for their blessings. COVID be cast down, Father, and every other such thing, Lord. We pray your blessings upon your people. Pray. I'm praying for those who are bereaved, Father, who have lost loved ones, God, who are suffering and uh, grieving over the loss, Father. I pray, God, your comfort to go to them and help them, Father. I pray, God, that you will be with us. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless finances. Bless, uh, uh, you know, jobs. Bless people with jobs and, and better jobs. Promotions, Father. We thank you for it in advance, oh God. Bless families. Lord, keep families, hallelujah, together. God, hallelujah, Lord. And bless those of us who desire to stand in you, God, that we can stand even the more. We love you tonight, Father. We thank you tonight. And we give you all the honor and the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you all tonight. Again, we're cutting off short due to the storm, uh, but I pray that you be safe and that you love up on one another. I love you with the love of the Lord, and I pray you will join me again next week, Tuesday night at 7 for Bible study. God bless you.